Scientists estimate that plants absorb roughly one quarter of humanity's carbon emissions each year. Tree services to this planet are not limited to just carbon sinks, but also include soil conservation and the water cycle regulation. They support natural and human food systems and provide homes for many species, including humans. Yet we often treat trees as disposable. In our last lesson, we looked at the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. In this lesson, we'll be looking at gas exchange in flowering plants, which will include talking about the structure of the leaf and the role of the stomata. <laughs> Remember to like, subscribe and post your questions in the comments box below. These are the specification points we'll be covering. In today's lesson, we want to be able to describe the role of diffusion in gas exchange, be able to describe the role of the stomata in gas exchange, and be able to understand how the structure of the leaf is adapted for gas exchange. As a starter, define aerobic respiration. Write the word equation for anaerobic respiration and explain why anaerobic respiration happens in humans and plants. You may pause the video while you think. For question 1, aerobic respiration is the release of energy using oxygen. It is important we don't write energy is produced as energy is not created, it is only transferred from one form to another. For question 2, glucose breaks down to produce ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus ATP. For question 3, in humans if you were to start exercising vigorously, you would reach a point where you are not taking in oxygen as fast as you need it to break down glucose. At this point, the cells in your body can respire without oxygen. In plants, they switch to anaerobic respiration in waterlogged soil when their root cells are not able to get oxygen. <laughs> Gas exchange in plants involves the movement of carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out of a plant. Carbon dioxide and oxygen move into and out of the leaf via diffusion. These gases move through pores on the underside of the leaf called the stomata. Carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis and oxygen is needed for respiration. Plant leaves are adapted to allow for gas exchange to occur. The spongy mesophyll layer has a very large surface area. They contain air spaces for carbon dioxide and oxygen to move through them. The spongy mesophyll cell membranes are also thin, moist and permeable aiding in gas exchange. The lower epidermis contains the stomata. The stomata are pores found on the underside of the leaf but they can also be found on the upper epidermis. They allow gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide to leave and enter the cell. They also allow water vapor to escape. Each stomata can be opened or closed depending on how turgid its guard cells are. In the light, these guard cells produce glucose, which lowers the water concentration in them, drawing water into the cells by osmosis. The guard cells become turgid and the stomata opens. In the dark, the glucose produced during the day will be used in respiration as no new glucose is made, increasing the concentration of water inside the cells as the solute concentration falls. This causes water to be drawn out by osmosis. The guard cells lose water, becoming flaccid, and the stomata closes. Other adaptations include the leaves are very thin, reducing the diffusion distance for carbon dioxide and oxygen to diffuse into and out the leaf. <laughs> The net, meaning overall, exchange of gases depends on the time of day and the light intensity. During the night, there is no photosynthesis as it requires sunlight. When there is no photosynthesis, there is a net release of carbon dioxide and a net uptake of oxygen for respiration. If there is enough light during the day, then the rate of photosynthesis is higher than the rate of respiration and there is a net release of oxygen and a net uptake of carbon dioxide. Let's take a look at this in some detail. During the day, respiration takes place all the time. So oxygen will be taken in by respiring cells and carbon dioxide will be produced as a waste product. In the daytime, light is present which allows photosynthesis to occur. So carbon dioxide will be taken in by photosynthesizing cells in plants and oxygen will be produced as a waste product. Usually, during the day, the rate of photosynthesis is higher than the rate of respiration, so more oxygen will be released and more carbon dioxide will be taken up. During the night, respiration is still occurring all the time, so oxygen will be taken in by respiring cells and carbon dioxide will be produced as a waste product. At night, light is not present, so photosynthesis will not occur, so carbon dioxide will not be taken in by photosynthesizing cells in the plant, and oxygen 
will not be produced as a waste product. Oxygen will be used by respiration, carbon dioxide will be produced by respiring cells. As a result, more carbon dioxide will be released and more oxygen will be taken up. It is important to note that only half of the carbon taken up by the plant is released through respiration, so plants still remain a net carbon sink, meaning they still absorb more than they emit. Let's now look at an exam style question. Explain why the stomata open and close. You can pause the video while you think. In the light, cells produce glucose, which lowers the water concentration in them, drawing water into the cell by osmosis. The guard cells become turgid and the stomata opens. In the dark, the glucose produced during the day will be used up in respiration as no new glucose is made, increasing the concentration of water inside the cell. This causes water to be drawn out by osmosis. The guard cells lose water becoming flaccid and the stomata closes. <laughs> By the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the role of diffusion in gas exchange, be able to describe the role of the stomata in gas exchange, and be able to understand how the structure of the leaf is adapted for gas exchange. In our next lesson, we'll look at the adaptations humans have for gas exchange. We'll be looking at the structure of the thorax and the alveoli, and we'll finish by talking about the biological consequences of smoking. Please remember to like, subscribe, and post any questions in the comments box below.